So good day, everybody. My name is Paul Thompson from Side Improve, and welcome to the latest episode of Marketing Mondays, where we feature marketing veterans and leaders to share their career journey and inspire the next generation of marketers. For this episode, we're super excited. We've invited a marketing veteran from the education sector, Royson Poe, uh, the director, the deputy director for corporate communications at the Singapore Institute of Technology. Prior to this, Royson was the Senior Assistant Director for Advocacy and Outreach at uh, SPD, a nonprofit organization in Singapore for people with disabilities. So we're very excited to have a conversation with Royson today, and this is Marketech Mondays. Hi, Royson. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I hear you loud and clear. Thank you for having Fantastic. me. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm great. I'm great. And yourself? How are you today? Good, good. Uh, working from home. Uh, well, I guess it's as good as it can get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I think we've all perfected the the perfect home office um, these days. And but there's always room to make it even better. There's always uh, something else to add. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. So thanks, you know, thanks so much for joining us today. Super excited to, to have a chat uh, around some of your uh, some of your career and your career highlights and, and kind of information, you know, what you can share with with those looking to break into and you to the industry. Um, and so before we kind of delve into your your current role, um, you know, we'd love to know where it all began for you. You know, what was your very first job? Um, have you always eyed up the, the kind of marketing um, industry or, and specifically education? Like, you know, where did it all start for you? Well, it certainly didn't start right at the beginning. Um, mm. As with many students, um, I kind of studied what I was good at and um, I was good with numbers. And, and yeah. so I, I took a banking major started working in the finance industry. And my first job was actually a credit analyst in a credit bureau, looking at annual reports and, and writing credit reports for, for clients. Um, yeah. It was through many different career uh, transitions that I gradually discovered uh, my passion for marketing and communications. Uh, so yeah, a long journey to, to, to where I'm at, I am today. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's, yeah, you know, a fascinating journey to, you know, to go from those kind of beginnings and end up in, in marketing. You know, what, what are some of the, the lessons that you learned early on in, in kind of the banking industry that you can still, uh, you know, you can still apply today in, in the marketing industry? I think um, today in, in marketing, uh, data has become very, very important. Um, yeah. I think for the young people who, who are entering the industry in the digital age, they will never realize that marketing used to be a very subjective field. Um, you had a lot of creative types, uh, people yeah. who were good with designs, people who were good with language in, in the industry, but that has slowly gone away. Um, I mean, that's still a skill set that you need, but data has become very, very important. Um, we, we look yeah. at marketing analytics, we look at uh, web traffic, we look at social media um, yeah. matrix. So the numbers part of the work has, has really helped me. Um, I see a lot of common skill sets uh, from finance to marketing, especially in the area of data analytics, to be able yeah. to digest and look at numbers and direct the marketing efforts from there. So that has, that has been a common thread across my career. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I a hundred percent agree, you know, it's, it's really, um, you know, I was reflecting on, on my own career, um, kind of, you know, just before, before I call now and very much, very much. I started in that same world as well. You know, that kind of create, you know, creative, um, driven, uh, world and, and it's really moved to a blend of creativity and the science, um, and how they complement each other. Which is yeah, super super fascinating. And do you remember the the first campaign that you you worked on? And you know how was it to manage that that first project when you were first cutting your teeth? Uh, 
Um, well, the first major campaign that I worked on was a campaign to promote a national IT literacy program for persons yeah. with disabilities. Um, and that was right about the time that social media was uh, coming into the marketing mix. Um, it was new and uh, being in an NGO with limited budgets, it was something that I, I had to explore. And yeah. I remember setting up Facebook and, and testing out posts, um, doing it on my personal uh, profile and then immediately applying it to uh, the, the official page for the program. Yeah. And, and along the way, um, kind of partnering a digital agency, um, which was a group of very young people, you know, back then in, in, in the early 2000s, every social agency was set up by, by people who were in their early 20s. Um, yes. So working with the, with the young people to understand uh, social media and then trying to connect that with uh, the, the goals and expectations from the management. So it was it was really interesting, um, and that was the f I would say the first campaign where the di digital aspects was as important as the creatives and the traditional advertising. Yeah, yeah, fascinating. Yeah, that was when when social really came to the fore. It really was, you know, about creating strategies that possibly hadn't been done before and kind of defining how how we could approach that that medium or, or that, that area, those channels, um, yeah, really interesting time. Um, and so then if we, if we then think about how that brought you to your, to your current role and, you know, we'd love to get to know you a bit better as, as a leader in, in the education sector. Um, so currently you're the deputy director for corporate communications, um, at, um, the Singapore Institute of Technology. Um, and I think since 2018, you, you've held that role. You know, what are your, what are your main responsibilities in, in this type of position, in your position now? Um, and how has the experience uh, been so far? Mm. Um, I think I've joined the university uh, for seven years. And in the last seven years, uh, it has been growing and evolving. We started as a, a very lean, we like to call it a commando team of, of communicators, yeah. uh, kind of like everyone doing everything from events to advertising to social media. Um, but we've really grown in the last seven years and we have different functions um, form up and uh, teams being split off. Um, currently, um, I oversee three functions and that is brand research. Um, in brand research, we measure uh, the brand sentiments around the university, uh, both externally and internally. Um, mm -hmm. I oversee all web communications. So uh, the university's uh, main website, as well as uh, coming up with the guidelines and uh, facilitating the development of microsites mm -hmm. uh, by different departments and divisions. Yeah. And of course, lastly, social media. Um, so all official social media channels of the universities are managed by corporate communications. Uh, again, the university is a very large place. Um, yeah. Different units uh, may set up channels as well. So it's about coming up with that overarching strategy to guide the development and management of channels. Yeah, fantastic. And, and what do you think has been, you know, what has been the most challenging and, and most rewarding parts um, of, of the role? I think the most challenging and the most rewarding part of the role is one and the same. For me, um, I see myself as an as a advocate for digital media and the leadership of a university is typically going to be a little bit more senior. They may not be as familiar with social media and digital channels. Yeah. So for me, I'm the middleman working with uh, the folks on the ground who know the channel and the technology, the agencies who are the specialists, and then yeah. kind of lobbying for that support or rationalizing yeah. with management and getting the buy-in and that executive level leadership for digital and social. Um, it is extremely rewarding when, uh, when I get that message across. Um, yeah. It is also very challenging and frustrating when you realize that, oh, no, it's not, it's not the way to kind of pitch for a particular yeah. buy-in or investment from the management. Um, but all in all, I think it is 
it is an exciting and a challenging role. Um, and there are ups and downs. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And, um, and just thinking specifically about um, higher education um, right now, I mean, obviously, given the given the global situation, you know, what are what are what are your thoughts on how we go about um, approaching this very fluid, disruptive landscape that we find ourselves in right now? Well, I think it's been really, really challenging for um, educational institutions. Um, yeah, we typically have a campus we draw our stakeholders into the campus and, you know, prospective students, parents visit us. But with COVID-19, that all has to go away. Um, and the entire university has to think about how to connect online, virtually. Um, our talks have evolved into webinars. Our yeah. open days and open houses have become virtual. And every individual in the university um, who used to be managing physical events, um, physical outreach, has become a digital media practitioner. Um, mm. Events have gone online. Yeah. Instead of standing up on the stage and, and doing a delivery of a talk, it's all going through video, like we're, what we're doing right now. Um, yeah. So it has been really challenging. People who have been hired to run events are now doing virtual events. Um, and again, the university is a big place you have yeah. practitioners right across um, and many people doing similar um, similar types of work. And so I think for, for universities the big, and educational institutions, the biggest challenge is kind of how do we level up the entire community mm -hmm. of staff to yeah. be able to leverage on best practices, to be able to kind of stop reinventing the wheel, you know, if you have a fantastic way to run a webinar. 20 other yeah. people can can kind of follow it and they don't need to reinvent their own way. Um, so I think that's the biggest challenge for educational institutions that are um, yeah. of a certain scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I 100% yeah, agree. And it's it's been a real catalyst for change, um, but exciting change, but challenging at the same time. And then, you know, we'd love to get a bit of insight into you as a leader. Like, um, you know, what would you say is your your philosophy when it comes to leadership and how do you how do you go about applying that uh, when you're working with your, your colleagues and your teams uh, within the university? Well, for me, I, I believe that everyone needs a sense of role and purpose in the team. They need to come to work knowing that everyone is counting on me for this part of the work. Um, I, I know that in, in many creative setups, it is uh, there is a kind of rotational or special assignment that people get assigned to projects. But yeah. I, I think that if someone knows what they are uniquely good at and they have been entrusted that role, um, they will come back to work every day. They, they have a purpose and they're motivated. So for me, um, my approach of leadership is, uh, is really to be very clear about responsibilities, creating roles for individuals, trusting them to do it well and encouraging them to give them that sense of purpose and that belonging uh, in the team. Mm, yeah, fantastic. And that really plays into the work environment we've really been placed in, I, I guess, with, you know, lots, you know, the, the increase in remote working, you know, that, that kind of self-sufficiency and, um, you know, that, that environment, I think, they, I think I can see that really supporting that. And, you know, obviously it's been, you know, a, very clearly a very diverse journey from, um, from banking into, into marketing and education, um, you know, for, for, for over a decade now, you know, what's, you know, when we think about success and we think about um, challenges and, and failure, although I don't like the word failure because we, we you know, every, every failure is obviously an opportunity to learn something new, um, you know, but what would you consider some of those, those, those moments where perhaps something didn't go quite to plan <laughs> and you had time to reflect on it and kind of be like, okay, well, this is, this is what I would do differently.
for me, I came from a sales and business development background. So, so that was kind of where I moved into from being a credit analyst from back end yeah. to front uh, customer facing roles. And, and in a customer facing role, you know, we are trained that the customer is always right. Uh, we find ways to be creative and to be tenacious and kind of chasing down mm -hmm. solutions and closing that sale. And I spent the, the early parts of my career in that role and it kind of shaped who I became. Um, and I applied mm -hmm. that same approach uh, internally as well as externally. But mm -hmm. I realized along the way that sometimes uh, there is a need for us to be able to say no and to be able yep. to do that in a professional and matured way that delivers value to the organization, especially internally. And I think in the marketing uh, role, all the more, you need to be able to find a way to kind of express um, diverse opinions or differing views so that you can co-create and improve on that product that the team is working on. Mm -hmm. So I would say that that was my biggest challenge in my career, uh, learning how to analyze something uh, critically and then mm -hmm. having that skill to be able to deliver, to bring it across in a professional, non-confrontational way that, mm. would, that would help to complete or enhance the final product as a whole. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And, and what about the, the flip side of that coin? So that was a, a challenge that, that obviously you turned into a skill and, and, a, and, a, and a, um, you know, something positive. Um, what are some of the, the moments that you, you celebrate or a particular moment that you feel is a, a great success? <laughs> um, well, there are many moments along uh, my career, um, but I like to think that the biggest moment is yet to come. Um, yeah. that, that I think it's important to have that expectation and the excitement in your career to kind of look forward and to expect something better, something uh, greater. Um, and that's that's how I keep myself motivated. Um, there are there have been little successes along the way, but I like to think that the biggest success is yet to come. Yeah, the goalposts always move. There's always there's always another another achievement, a higher mountain to go for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And and like and throughout that journey, um, mentors you know so important in in today's um kind of workplace not only in, in in marketing but you know you know throughout throughout organizations um you know who would you consider a greatest mentor um and, and how did they inspire you i i wouldn't say that uh i had a mentor in in, in the discipline of marketing per se but yeah. I remember uh, that the, the biggest impact that a supervisor had on me was, was a supervisor who saw a certain ability in me and mm. then challenged me to go beyond my scope of work. Um, well, this happened when I was in the credit bureau. Uh, essentially, I was an analyst, so I write reports and there were salespeople, business development people that uh, met with the clients. but. Um, at that point, my supervisor felt that, hey, why don't you try presenting? Because um, she saw a certain uh, potential in me that I, I never realized that I had. Um, and so I did my first client presentation together with sales. And that was it. I joined sales shortly after. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's, it's really powerful how mentors um if if they see something in in you and then they bring it out they they help discover um something hidden something that you may not even be aware of and at some point if we become leaders uh supervisors and we work with younger people i think that's what i, I strive to do to be yeah. able to find that hidden gem and to help develop it or kind of bring it to the forefront. So it's yeah. really about mentors who, who believe in us so that we, we, we start believing in ourselves. 
yeah yeah it's so so important i feel um and you know how do you how do you how do you demonstrate you know that leadership like do you have a mantra that, that like a personal mantra that you that you live by as a kind of a, a guiding principle um as a, as a leader well not so much as a leader but maybe just as my personal mantra um yeah. i think in in marketing uh and communications it is a very there is this objective side of it and then there's a, the creative subjective elements of it and and many a times there are, there's diverse opinions strong diverse opinions so I, I i think for me i always tell myself that i should meet by my biggest supporter and my own biggest ally because we have a lot of we face a lot of criticism in our work we face a lot of feedback sometimes constructive mm -hmm. sometimes not not so constructive yeah. um and you know we it, you don't need to go go for a second round and kind of beat yourself up uh if something doesn't go as well as it should um i think it's important to just take in that feedback and then say all right we're just gonna do better the next time round and you know kind of dust yourself off and yeah. keep going so yeah. i think it's important to be your biggest uh supporter be your biggest ally yeah amazing um yeah i mean that's like such an insightful conversation and there's so many fantastic you know nuggets of information in there and and that the many people will be able to take away from this um you know and it's it's fantastic to learn about your your journey through leadership um, and that's really what Mark Tech Mondays is, is is all about. It's for those new to the industry, especially you know the the Gen Gen Zs and Millennials um, who are aspiring to build their names and, and careers um, in the industry. Um, and I'm sure there's plenty they will take away from that. But you know, as as we kind of start to to wrap up the the chat, you know, what would be your main advice um, to those entering the the market in the industry? Um, you know, what would be your main advice to them? I think the marketing industry is really exciting. And a lot of that excitement comes from the technological disruptions that are taking place. Mm -hmm. um, things that we do a year ago for campaigns change. Facebook yeah. changes their alg algorithm every now and again. Um, there are always new ways of reaching the target audience. Um, so I think it's very important for, for anyone entering the marketing industry to have this ability to keep learning, unlearning and relearning because you will never be able to kind of rely on historical knowledge and, and say, okay, I've done it before and it's gonna be exactly the same the next year. It's not, even by weeks and months, things are changing. And so I think it's very important for the young people entering this industry to be prepared that you will never know everything that you need to know. You just have to keep figuring it out as, as you go mm -hmm. along. Yeah, fantastic. Well, you know, that's a, that's a perfect, um, perfect thought to, to leave um, our, our viewers with, I think. Um, so thank you so much, Royson, for those, those words of advice and sharing your experience um you know your career journey with us uh i'm sure um those watching have gotten a great deal of inspiration from how you you know you started out in your beginnings you know to achieving uh, the kind of the levels uh, that you're at now um you know and, and it's been a challenging year for the marketing world um in these these strange uh times um and you know when we have dedicated leaders like yourself helping shape the future of, of, of marketing um, you know, I'm optimistic we're, we're going to come out stronger, um, stronger than before. Um, so there we have it. Um, our Marketech Mondays with Royson Poe of Singapore Institute of Technology. If you're a marketing leader watching and you have a similar story to share with us, please email us at mondays at marketech-apac.com. My name is Paul Thompson. Thank you for watching. And until the next insightful episode, take care.